In this video, we will be solving this question which says Olsen likes strong coffee. The stronger, the better. But he cannot distinguish the small differences. Over the years, Mrs. Olsen has discovered that if she changes the amount of coffee by more than one teaspoon in a six cup pot, Olsen can tell that she did it. But he cannot distinguish the differences smaller than one teaspoon per pot. Where A and B are two different cups of coffee. Let us write A is strictly preferred to B if Olsen prefers cup A to cup B. Let us write A is weakly preferred to B if Olsen either prefers A to B or cannot tell the difference between them. Let us write A is indifferent to B if Olsen cannot tell the difference between in the cups A and B. Suppose that Olsen is offered cups A, B and C brewed in Olsen's 6 cup pot. Cup A was brewed using 14 cups of coffee in the pot. Cup B was brewed using 14.7 teaspoons of coffee in the pot and cup C was brewed using 15.5 teaspoons of coffee in the pot. For each of the following expressions, determine whether it is true or false. Now let us first understand what all information is given to us. So Olsen can figure out the difference among the cup of coffee. If the change of amount of coffee is more than one teaspoon in a six cup pot, else she cannot. Even if the difference is smaller than one teaspoon per pot, she cannot distinguish. Also, we are given that A is preferred to B if Olsen prefers cup A to cup B and Olsen would prefer cup A to cup B b when the difference is more than one teaspoon of coffee and he would weakly prefer a to b if olsen either prefers a to b so that means for him to prefer cup a to cup b the difference has to be more than one teaspoon because only then he can tell the difference or when he cannot tell the difference between them that would be or it is less than one teaspoon and he would be indifferent between them when he cannot tell the difference which would happen if your difference between the two cups of coffee is less than one teaspoon of coffee. Also we are given three cups with three different amounts of coffee in them which is denoted by this. So your cup A has 14 teaspoons of coffee, cup B has 14.75 teaspoons of coffee and cup C has 15.5 teaspoons of coffee. So with all this information we are asked is A indifferent to B. Now note that cup A has 14 14 teaspoons of coffee and cup B has 14.75 teaspoon of coffee. So the difference between them is less than 1 teaspoon of coffee. That means he cannot tell the difference between both the cups. And if he cannot tell the difference between both the cups, then we say that he is indifferent between both the cups. Thus this statement holds true. So the answer to this statement is true. Let's move on to the next part which says is B indifferent to A. Again, if we compare A to B or B to A, the difference would remain the same. That is, both the cups would have a difference of 0.75 teaspoons of coffee, which is less than one teaspoon of coffee. And if that is the case, we say that A is indifferent to B or B is indifferent to A, that which is one and the same thing. Hence, this statement is also true. Let's move on to the next part, which says, is B indifferent to C? Now, cup B has 14.75 teaspoons of coffee and cup C has 15.5 teaspoons of coffee. So if you calculate again the difference between both the cups is 0.75 teaspoons of coffee which is again less than one teaspoon of coffee and if that is the case then the Olsen would not be able to tell the difference. Hence the answer to this question is again true. Now we are asked to compare A and C that is can Olsen tell the difference between cup A and cup C? Your cup A has 14 teaspoons of coffee. Cup C has 15.5 teaspoons of coffee. So if you compare the difference, the difference turns out to be 1.5 teaspoons of coffee, which is more than one teaspoon of coffee. And according to the question, if the difference is more than one teaspoon of coffee, Olsen can tell the difference between them. And if he can tell the difference between them then he won't be indifferent between the two cups of coffee thus the answer to this question is false 
Your next part ask us to again compare cup C with cup A. So again, cup A has 14 teaspoons of coffee. Cup C has 15.5 teaspoons of coffee. The difference is 1.5 teaspoons of coffee. Thus, which is more than one teaspoon of coffee. Hence, he would be able to tell the difference between them. Thus, again, the answer to this question is false. Let's move on to the next part, which says if A is weakly preferred to B. Now note that. Cup A has 14 teaspoons of coffee. Cup B has 14.75 teaspoons of coffee. So the difference is technically less than 1 teaspoon of coffee. Hence he should not be able to tell the difference. But the definition of weak preference here included that he either prefers A to B or cannot tell the difference between them and focus on or. So either this condition should be hold true or this condition should hold true. In our case the second condition is holding true. Hence we say that this statement is true. Let's move on to the next part. Here we are asked to compare B and A. That is if B is weakly preferred to A. Then again the difference between cup A and cup B is less than 1 teaspoon of coffee. Hence Olson would not be able to tell the difference. But the definition of weak preference includes that he should either prefer A to B or cannot tell the difference. Again in our case the second condition is being fulfilled as it is the case of or. Hence either of the two conditions should be fulfilled. Thus the answer to this question is true. Now let's move on to the next part which say is B is weakly preferred to C. Your cup B has 14.75 teaspoons of coffee. Your cup C has 15.5 teaspoons of coffee. The difference is 0.75 teaspoons of coffee. So which is again less than 1 teaspoon of coffee. Hence he won't be able to tell the difference. And this condition talks about either or or. And here he cannot tell the difference. Thus the second condition would hold true. Hence again the statement is true. Let's move on to the next part which says is A weakly preferred to C. Now cup A has 14 teaspoons of coffee. Cup C has 15.5 teaspoons of coffee. The difference is 1.5 teaspoons of coffee which is more than 1 teaspoon of coffee. Hence he would be able to tell the difference. But he prefers the one with more coffee. That means he would be preferring cup C to cup A. And if that is the case, then this statement will be false. As this particular statement to be true, it should be the case that A is strictly preferred to C. But we have the opposite of it. That is C is strictly preferred to A. Which contradicts the definition of weak preference given in the question. Hence this statement is false. Now let's move on to the next part which says, is C weakly preferred to A? Now comparing cup A and cup C we see that the difference is of 1.5 teaspoons of coffee which is more than 1 teaspoon of coffee. Hence Olson would be able to tell the difference. But here Olson would prefer cup C to cup A as he prefers the cup with higher amount of coffee. And now if we see the definition of weak preference it includes that if A is weakly preferred to B then it should hold true that A is preferred to B or he cannot tell the difference. And we are dealing with the case of or and since the first condition is holding true thus we say that this statement is true. Now let's move on to the next part which says is A strictly preferred to B. Now comparing A and B we see that the difference of amount of teaspoons of coffee is less than 1 teaspoon. Hence also cannot tell the difference and if that is the case then he will not prefer cup A to cup B. Thus this statement is false as for A to be strictly preferred to B. Olson should prefer cup A to cup B and he would prefer only that cup which has higher amount of coffee. But he can distinguish only when there is more than one teaspoon of coffee. And here he cannot make that distinction between the two cups. Hence he will not prefer one cup over the other. Thus this statement is false. Next part says is B preferred to A. Again the difference between both the cups of coffee is less than one teaspoon of coffee. Thus he cannot make the difference between the two hence he will not prefer one cup over the other again the statement holds false part c says 
is b strictly preferred to c your cup b has 14.75 teaspoons of coffee your cup c has 15.5 teaspoons of coffee the difference between them is 0.75 teaspoons of coffee which is less than 1 teaspoon of coffee hence olson won't be able to make the difference between them and if he is not able to make the difference between them he will not prefer one cup over the other rather he would be indifferent between them and uh, if he cannot prefer one cup over the other thus this statement will be false so let's move on to the next part which says a strictly preferred to c now if we compare cup a and cup c the difference is of 1.5 teaspoons so yes he can tell the difference thus he would prefer one cup over the other but olson prefers the cup with higher amount of teaspoons and here c has higher amount of teaspoons so he would prefer cup c to cup a which is contradiction to the statement hence we say that this statement is also false moving on to the next part we are asked if c is preferred over a now comparing cup a and cup b again the difference is of 1.5 teaspoons and olson would be preferring the cup with higher amount of coffee which is cup c so he would prefer cup c to cup a thus answer to this question is true so your next part says is olson's at least as good as relation transitive so what do you mean by transitive preferences so we say if the consumption bundle x1 x2 is at least as good as the consumption bundle y1 y2 and y1 y2 is at least as good as the consumption bundle z1 z2 then we assume that x1 x2 is at least as good as z1 z2 in other words if the consumer thinks that x is at least as good as y and that y is at least as good as z then the consumer thinks that x is at least as good as z now here we saw that a is weakly preferred to b and b is weakly preferred to c then for preferences to be transitive it should hold true that a is weakly preferred to c but from part i we saw that this statement is false so this is not the case hence olson's relation of at least as good as is not transitive so the answer to this question is no moving on to the next part it says is olson's can't tell the difference relation this transitive now here from part a you have a is indifferent to b and b is indifferent to c from part c then for the can't tell the difference relation to be transitive it should be the case that a should be indifferent to c but from part d we see that this relation holds false but this is not the case hence again the olson's can't tell the differences are not transitive so the answer to this question is no moving on to the last part which is part r and your part r says is olson's better than relation transitive note that from here we know that a is not strictly preferred to b that this statement is false so we get a is not strictly preferred to b from here we get that this statement is also false which means that this is also not holding true hence for the better than relation to be transitive it should be the case that a is also not better than c which is confirmed by part n as part n is false so if a is not better than b and b is not better than c then obviously a should not be better than c thus this statement is true hence the answer to this question is yes